Coach, a lot of times will say the word phrase, only at Yale. Have you ever followed a bulldog before being interviewed? <laughs> that hasn't happened. But uh, I think I might be a little better looking. Might be the only one on campus that I am better looking than. So who knows? Sure, Sherman on Saturday happened to look down from the booth. And at one point, he, the game was so tight he couldn't look. He was facing the stands. So <laughs> the dog looking the wrong way. But let's really, the defense of this team keeps it in, in even games as crazy as the one on Saturday, I've never seen a game where both teams, it seemed, you looked up and it was third down and more than 10 on both sides. There were 17 punts. I mean, that, you know, there wasn't a lot of offense generated by either team. And, I, you know, we came into the game as the number one and number two defenses in the league and certainly lived up to the billing, if, if not more. Um, a, both offenses really struggled. Both offenses really tr had trouble sustaining anything. And... With the punters punting the way they did, we were both a long ways away most of the time. And, and what happened in the game and the difference in the game was the turnovers that created the different field position. And then, you know, as this, when we got ahead 7 nothing off of their turnover, uh, they, in turn, in the second half, when they got that first possession and punted it down to the one-yard line, we were in a hole right from the start. And, you know, we got out of it a little bit, but, you know, then we had the fumble. And in, in the end, the game turned... When you have two teams like playing like that on what you'd think it would turn on, you know, the field position and the turnovers. How's the attitude of the team? I, you know, as the kids were really down on Sunday, and um, this is a pretty resilient group, though. I mean, I, this is a – Bobby's a pretty special captain. I, I, there's no quitting these guys. I mean, we're going to play. We're going to come to play hard, and I think we had a great practice today, great attitude, and – uh, you know, I was with the two guys at the press conference, and John Schiff made an interesting comment. He goes, nobody would ever say it, but I know that there's guys, people who are disappointed in, in the offense. And you know what? That's a really good thing to have on a team because no one would say it. And that's a good, that's a good thing because we're a team and we're in this together, and we've got to find a way, and we've got to get it better offensively. You know, and our, our defense will keep playing hard, and they will keep trying to win the football game. Same thing on the special teams. And we've got to find some answers on offense and be a better offensive football team this week. Talk about the press conference today, and Columbia coach Norris Wilson was on, and he, he made an interesting point himself when he said, you know, Yale never goes into a spoon. Yale goes into a spoon, and it's six and four. And, you know, he's trying to build a Columbia program where they're, they're jazzed up about their win against Dartmouth last week, and now they're one and five, but they've been playing better. So, I mean, it really does, when you take a step back from the immediacy of a game or a season, about the program here at Yale, really, that three and three, and everyone's pulling their hair out. Yeah, I mean, it's part of the expectations when you're winning. I mean, we, you know, we've won 17 games in the last two years, and no one else in the league has done that. <laughs> but right now we're 3-3. Three and three. So, you know, short memory, and we, we need to get it straightened out. We need to win on Saturday. And as I said to the players, it, it starts Saturday. You know, we got four games left. Seniors have four games left. They can go 4-0. Oh, and it, But it starts this week. we got to play this game and play hard in this football game. we got to beat Columbia. And they're excited. they got to win. They've, they've been in six close football games. Yeah, they've been playing very, very well on defense. And they're a team that, you know, they gave Penn everything they could handle the week before in a 15-10 to 10 game. And uh, they'll come here excited and ready to play, and we need to be excited and ready to play. You talked about needing to speed things up a little bit on offense and do that. And w what does that entail? Well, I, I think that it, it the we have to get – People on people. We, I, we've, I've used examples with the players of two or three things that happened in the game that no player ever screws up on purpose. Okay, and it's kind of been a theme of mine. You know, whenever, you whenever you're the head coach and people start complaining about what happened, well, we didn't do this or we didn't do that or this guy didn't do this, this and I always say to them, no one screws up on purpose. There's always a reason for what happened. If we made a mistake on a third and one, we made an assignment mistake. It's, a com it's always a combination of things. It's the coaching. If it wasn't clear enough to that kid, that's why the mistake was made. Yes, he made a mistake, but it's, a, it's always a combination. As long as the guy's physically able. I mean, if you've got players that aren't physically able to perform against the guy they're playing, that's a different story. You know, you're not going to win in those circumstances, but that's not the circumstances. And we all got to share the burden, and we all got to go forward and get better. That's bottom line. And what I think that means is simplifying, get the question marks out of the players' heads, let's go. Let's, let's run some things that we understand and get throw, throw the things that we understand, get the ball off quickly, do not get, our, get ourselves in trouble, get out of those long yarded situations you were talking about. And I think that's, I, I talk about speeding up the offense 
it, it's not like we're going to be no huddle or something. That's not what I mean. It, it is get in and out of the huddle, be in a play that you understand, and let's go. Let's not try to fool anybody. Let's not try to get overly exotic. We need to get back to the basics and get get our run game going, give Mike some space to to make some things back happen. And, you know, he's a great football player. we got to take advantage of his abilities. On the other side of the ball, and I'm not talking from a statistical perspective, this the best defense you've ever coached? I'll, t- I'll tell you, you know, I mean, you may we may have had a bigger, stronger team up front or, you know, different kind, but never had a defensive football team as opportunistic. They are unbelievable in terms of big plays. No, they've never been around a team that has had as many big play players. Uh, you know, Bobby, as many big plays as he's made, you know, eight interceptions as a linebacker or whatever, you know, the touchdowns and the whole thing. Steve Santoro isn't far behind. You know, Paul Rice isn't far behind. Uh, it, it's, it's just amazing the number of playmakers. And, it, it, you know, we make fun of Casey because Casey hasn't had an interception yet. Uh, you know, he's kind of our cover guy. All the other guys make all the, the, the plays that get the headlines or whatever. But they that, I think, is what makes them stand out. We, we've, you know, the 99 defense, we were ranked extremely high. Last year, we were number one in the country in scoring defense. You can't get much better than that. Uh, we're very close. You know, we're near the top again this year. But last year, we were actually number one. Uh, but this team, in terms of making big plays when they have to be made, uh, you know, examples even on Saturday with, with the turnover at the 12-yard line, we held them to a field goal. Did the same thing in the Cornell game when, when we had a turnover down inside the 10. That's, those are the things that make a defense really stand out, that they don't give up a touchdown in circumstances that are most teams would give up a touchdown. And coming out on a field, you know, first and goal, or coming out on a field, first and 10 at the 12, and th- I think that's what kind of sets them apart. Well, look, even Yale scored its touchdown. You scored your touchdown when at the 17-yard line after the Paul Rice interception. The Penn defense couldn't hold you guys to a field goal. Yeah, it's exactly right. We had one opportunity in the red zone, and we went one for one for a touchdown. It, it's we talk about transition in the game all the time. Yeah, we actually, you know, you practice it too. You know, you you go out on the field and something bad happened. I mean, we talk to the players all the time about getting through the lows as quickly as they can and staying on the highs as long as they can. And that's a tremendous example. You you know, you come off the field and you had a good series and, you know, hey, you, we return a punt we, or whatever we do and now something bad happens. It is really hard to go back out on the field because everybody – when, when, you, when an interception occurs or when a fumble occurs, whatever it might be, everybody gives us, oh, you know, and it's human nature. But the really great ones take a breath and get out there and get focused and play and, and, and maybe play beyond it at times. And that this defense has been able to do that almost this entire season. Thank you, Coach. Good luck on Saturday. Thank you. Jackson Leckie, the head coach of the Bulldogs.